So we'll do one more thing at this point. We've been <coughs> focusing on the content aspect of our project. I'm going to do one little thing to, to, to get you excited about day two, which I will touch on just a little bit of CSS. I will touch on, it's kind of boring to keep looking at this plain black and white screen. I want to colorize it a little bit. I'll show you one of the basic, quickest ways to do it. And yes, earlier I said best practice to separate each into its own file. Yes, we will do that. But for the moment, we're going to write our code directly in this file, just so that it works, and then later on we'll make it more correct. What we can do with CSS, so HTML, hypertext markup language, we're marking within the document hypertext. We're writing tags that create content and structure. With CSS, which is short for Cascading Style Sheets, Basically, it's the design of things. How does something look? Uh, how can we change it? And, and so forth. Quick question to the class. Was the person that was sitting there, do you want to see left? I don't think my computer could reset, so I'm guessing yes. I don't want to get that seat right there if she doesn't, he or she doesn't come back. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so CSS is the design of things. We're going to change the default behavior of our tags. The default behavior of the body tag is white background, black text. Let's change the default behavior. Let's go back to line 7. We're going to add another attribute. So go inside the body tag and right after the Y press a space and the attribute this time we're adding is style equals quote end quote. That's basically now we're tapping into CSS. Cascading style sheets. We're going to change the default style. This is not the best way to do it. The better way will be next time, where we actually put it in, a, in an external file. I'll explain why next time. But for the moment, now we've opened up this whole concept of CSS, this whole huge book. Like, this book right here is just JavaScript. We have a book from the same author, looks the same, another big thick one, just HTML and CSS. Those are big languages just on themselves you can write a whole 500 book about, 500 page book about. But this is one little tip of the iceberg here. What we're doing is we're going to change the style this way. Inside the quotes, type background dash color colon space. And then here we can pick a color. For example, pink semicolon. Notice the syntax something we're changing, how are we changing it? Something we're changing, colon, space, how we're changing it, semicolon, the end. So this whole thing is CSS, basically, the CSS style attribute. What specific attributes? The background color, make it pink. Save it and run it. See what you get. <laughs> you should get a lovely shade of Pepto-Bismol. I usually type pink because if you know how to touch type pink, you can actually type it with one hand. You know that? Um, it's, what's that? No, I was just saying that you can type pink with one hand. P-I-N-K. Mm. Let's try another color here. Instead of pink, what about another color? What about uh, red? We we'll try red. You get a nice big, bright red color. So a very bright red. What about another color? Yellow. Let's try yellow. Yellow. <laughs> so try a couple of different colors. What about gold? Gold? That's gold. It doesn't sparkle, but that's gold. Okay, if there's gold, what about silver? Silver. That's silver. It doesn't sparkle, but that's silver. Okay, what about bronze? You win gold, you win silver, you win bronze. Do you win bronze? 
we can. We'll see that in just a moment. But right now here, I'm trying to type bronze. Bronze doesn't exist. When one of these colors, when one of these reserved colors doesn't exist, it just goes back to default. We can be specific. We can write a color formula. So there's about 114 or 140 reserved colors. Bronze is not one of them. But some weird ones are, such as bisque. What color would you say is bisque? Well, first of all, is it lobster bisque or what? Bisque. It's a soup. It's a peach color, beige, some kind of peach color. So bisque exists. Bronze doesn't. Um, purple. Does purple exist? Yes. Well, here's some weird ones that also exist. Alice blue. <laughs> It's a very well, that's cool because it's a lot lighter than blue. <laughs> it's a lot lighter than blue. So Alice blue. There's a bunch of them. Uh, there's goldenrod, I think. There's a bunch of them. We can get a full list of all of these reserved colors at w3schools.com. So over at the w3schools.com site, quick segue. W3 Schools, if you go to References, HTML color reference. Here it gives you a very visual uh, look at some examples. Color names. Yes. Okay, now since it shows the hex also, instead of putting the color name, could you use the hex too? Yes, we're going to do that one moment. <laughs> so uh, Azure. Blanched almond. <laughs> we, have, we have these weird colors. There's 140 of them. So, color formula. We can do that instead. A couple of ways to do it. If we do it this way, let's go back to line 7. Instead of having a reserved name, let's do it this way. Let's type RGB. Open, close parentheses. RGB, open and close parentheses. Now what we can do is mix colors, red, green, and blue. And this goes 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. Red, green, blue. From 0 to 255. So, for example, 25 units of red, um, 100 units of green, and uh, five units of blue. So it goes from zero to 255. I don't know what that color is. I'm just going to mix it. Let's see. Green. Some kind of weird green. <laughs> I think it's a projector also, my projector. And so um, if you also have the hexadecimal number, if you've got the hexadecimal number that, uh, that you can get out of Photoshop or something, you can um, write the hexadecimal number as well. Um, for example, whatever color this is, I'm going to write the pound symbol, uh, two two uh, d d uh, zero zero. I don't know what that color is, but I'm mixing it. This is a different kind of way to mix colors than RGB. Um, I don't want to get too off track, but that's another way. It's another kind of green there. So you can get these colors out of Photoshop, out of Illustrator, and then you can plug them in here. <laughs> okay, so let's say we've written all of this code and we want to comment our code. That's very valuable because comments allow us to you know, give ourselves comments for when we come back next time. What did I do? What did that mean? So I'll show comments and then we'll wrap it up here. Um, right above your body, 
press enter to give yourself a new line 7. We'll type the angle brackets again. This is one of the most unique ones. So guys over here in the corner? Guys over here in the corner? Here is the, one of the most unique tags. This is going to be a comment, and it goes like this. Exclamation point, dash, dash, space, dash, dash. Anything you write in here is a comment. So it's a very specific way to write this. It doesn't look like any other kind of tag, except that it does have open and close angle brackets. But that's the opening angle. That's the opening tag for comment. That's the closing tag. I'm showing this, and we'll get more complex with it later, because this is for comments. This is to write notes to yourself. And later we'll see this is to debug our code also. We'll see what that means later. I want to wrap up at this point, and I know this is just the tip of the iceberg of CSS and many other concepts. But when we come back next time, we'll have a full day about CSS and other such things. So at this point, I'm going to save my work. I'm going to save it to my flash drive, and I'm going to save it to the network folder. So let me remind you where the network folder is at in case you want a copy of my work. If you go to the desktop, you open up our computer window, and you'll see various drives. There's my flash drive plugged in, your flash drive maybe, but our network is right here, network location drive Z, classroom data drive Z. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot access that from your laptop. Uh, you have to do it from our computer. I asked our technician, can we make it so that our students can access the network folder from their laptops? He laughed at me because he doesn't want you to mess up his network. So you have to be on our computers. Go to the classroom data folder, and then you're going to scroll down to our folder, which is Campos Android 1, and I put in there my code. If you want a copy of my code, go ahead and take it. Copy it to your flash drive, and that's where I ended up with right now. Question. They don't pay me for Blackboard. So it's in here whenever you come in. Any, any screen, any, any computer that you are here in the, uh, in the classroom, you can access this. And I also put my notes. So what little notes that I wrote there, I just put them into the folder as well. Yes. I saved the program code to the desktop. After I close out the program code, I click on the desktop file to edit it. website. How do I get to the code from where? All right, good point. So when you go home, and if you've got Windows, what you want to do is you want to download Notepad++. On the Mac, you want brackets. When you go home then, and after you install Notepad++, you're going to have your code. But if you try to double click it, it'll open as a website because it's saved as a website. So to get back into Notepad, you, you can do it two ways. Open Notepad, and then file open that file. Or faster, right click the file, Edit with Notepad++. This assumes you've got Notepad++ installed on your home computer. So when we come back next time, we're going to continue. We're not going to continue with this file, actually. Uh, so again, it's not mission critical that you save this and take it with you. But I'll put my code in the folder. You can take it if you want. What we worked on today was various basic concepts of HTML. Much more to learn, of course, but there's a book about it. Plenty of websites out there. When we come back, we'll focus on some CSS and HTML. Keep learning the basics. Keep going on. JavaScript, jQuery Mobile. And you'll see very fast, even with little experience, we're going to be able to create the example project that I mentioned at the beginning of the day. vmcampus.com slash mysdce. We're going to be able to create this example project relatively quickly, even though it looks much more advanced than what we've done so far. So we're going to wrap up at this point. Some lab time until 9.30. Thank you for coming. Thank you.